NHL. It's hockey. Christian Fourier, hockey insider. None of these guys in Boston sports talk radio go to the games. Let the adults talk hockey, Wiggy. You sit over there. Sure, old-time hockey. Like it is sure. Yeah. Yeah. They always go out and find a kid who's really good to join the team. We need a ringer. We need a Canadian. That's why I played hockey, because, yeah, you either play hockey or you have to go hunt bear. That's it. And he is not a bear hunter. Joining us now on the Harbor One Hotline is Nesson and WEEI hockey analyst, our friend Andrew Razor Raycroft, here with Gresh and Hart, who is in for Foyer today. Uh, Razor, good morning, buddy. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I'm wonderful. I'm in beautiful Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. So I am uh, feeling the festive spirit up here. Okay. Is the most famous person from Winnipeg, Canada, Chris Jericho? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. Uh, I did not know he was from here, but yes, that sounds uh, like he would be the most popular person uh, from here. Now, what I have also heard about Winnipeg, and the uh, the legendary Dave Gosher told me about this, is that usually it is so cold in Winnipeg I don't want to call it like underground tunnels, but apparently there is a pretty extensive underground walking system or or infrastructure in Winnipeg. Is that true? That is very true. There's tunnels. There's uh, second floor bridges that uh, allow you to walk around basically the downtown of the city without going outside. Fortunately, it's only like 30, 32 here, so it actually feels like July weather for Winnipeg, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> What is cold for a Canadian? Like, at what temperature does Andrew Raycroft say, oh, man, even I can't deal with this? Uh, it would be, it's like in the teens Fahrenheit, and you're looking at 15 below where it's like winter time, and you're saying that's really cold. Wow. Uh, so it's let's all talk- about layers, guys. It's all about layers. It is. That's true. That is true. Um, it's about- Canadians don't like weather. We don't like cold. We just know how to prepare better for it. That's the difference. Wait, if you don't like cold, why don't you just move out of Canada? Oh, you did. Well, yeah. Not- <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you went to Boston. So- <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's not like he's in uh, Phoenix or something <laughs> like that, you know? So with the Bruins yes. uh, playing the Jets here, um, would you say they have, they're have scuffling? Are they fledgling? What's the Bruins' mentality heading into this game? Well, Winnipeg's really good. Uh, so that's their first mentality is that their focus and their antenna, antenna should be up for this group. Uh, they're playing really well. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say scuffling. I think the league's really hard. And I think you look at 78% of the teams are 500 over the last 10 games. Everyone's kind of beating each other. Everyone's grinding for points. There's teams that are in big trouble that are looking five, six, seven points out of the playoff spot at this point and are saying, we need to go. And I think we saw that with Minnesota the other night, how desperate they were playing against the Bruins. And I think you're seeing uh, more of those teams right now. So the Bruins are in a great spot. They went on their 10-game run early in the season, and now it's just about getting better. But, but the league's really hard, and I think the way – the Bruins won every game last season. It's easy to think scuffling, but I think this is more normal for an NHL season the way they've gone the last while. And they didn't have Zach, they didn't have McAvoy in three, four, five of those games, and they got points. And I think that just goes to show the resilience of this group. Razor, you mentioned that the league is tough right now. Is that because the league has kind of come to the middle? Or are there a significant ab- uh, amount of teams in the NHL that are getting that much better? No, I think it's coming to the middle a little bit. Uh, without being able to make trades, without having a real big free agency market last summer, everyone kind of had to stay status quo. And, and the salary cap has really forced parity. And, and that's what the league wanted in the start. But the fact the cap didn't go up this summer, I think the parity is even more so. And and it's also really hard through the holiday season. I think you see kind of middle of January, the upper echelon teams take another jump. At this time of year, as you guys know, it's easy to be distracted. It's easy to be uh, thinking about other things. And I think that that adds into some of the bad habits and some of the, the ugly losses that teams are taking. Speaking of losses, I think the Bruins are what? two and six in overtime. And I was reading how they kind of focused on three on three in practice the other day. What, where do those struggles stem from? Do you think they're capable of turning that around? What, what's that issue all about? 
Well, they're they're certainly capable of turning it around, but it is two and six isn't good, and, and I think that <laughs> I think that, that that alone though has also raised the urgency. You, you talked about them. I was at practice yesterday. Worked on it for five or ten minutes. A lot of it is defense um, and holding on to the puck possession wise. Jim Montgomery yesterday talked about the shot the Brust took that led to the three on one the other way. You can't do that in overtime, and if you are going to take that shot, it better hit the net. Um, so. There's certainly a mentality that they have to change. They have to get a little more urgent, and you hope that a 2-6 and six record in overtime will get their attention on that. Razor, what do you make of what has happened with Matty Patra? And uh, he is now going to be, uh, what is this, a part of the uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian World Junior Team. I got that right, right? You did. You did. I'm impressed. I, <laughs> so, Matt Patra, Matt Patra was on the TV more yesterday and this morning than he has been probably the whole time he was here in Boston. And that's, that's what happens with World Junior in Canada. It's basically the biggest thing. The NHL takes a back seat come December 22nd for 10 days while the World Juniors are happening. Um, it's a good opportunity for Matty Patra. Again, when the season started, he probably was dreaming of playing one NHL game and then playing in the World Junior Championships. And for him to be able to bang two of those things out within the first three months, of this season uh, are a big positive. He's got to go. He's got to dominate. He's got to take the NHL pace and skill that he's learned and, and do really well over there. So it's good for him. Of course, you never want to leave the NHL ever. Um, but I think all in all, at the end of his day, for the development of him, the experience will be real good for him to be over there. So, Razor, I'm sure there are some fans out there who don't quite understand, wait a minute, how in the hell can a guy go from playing in the National Hockey League to playing in World Juniors? It doesn't correlate. <laughs> can you kind of explain sort of the setup, how we got to the point to where he can be on this team, and then can he come back to the Bruins once this is all said and done? Yeah, sure. Yeah, good good question. Uh, yes, he can come back. He can come back right away. So essentially, the the Bruins had one opportunity to uh, quote-unquote send Matt down, and that is this tournament. The NHL, the CBA allows the teenagers that are eligible for this tournament to be sent down to it and come back when the tournament is over. Uh, now, that doesn't that also could mean, though, that he does go to juniors at the end of this, depending on what the decisions get made. But yes, Matty Potter can be back on the Bruins playing on January 8th when the tournament's over. You mentioned missing the net in overtime as part of the problem. Uh, Jake DeBrusque was involved with that the other night. Um, he hasn't scored a goal in, what, eight games, stuck on four. Uh, what can the Bruins do about that? Well, I, I mean, Jake DeBrusque has, has got to get himself going. I think he's been... He's played a good 200-foot game. He hasn't been a liability at all for this team all season long. He's done a really nice job. But we all know, and he knows, that he's a goal scorer, and he feels like he's a goal scorer in this league. And when, when you're at that low of a number heading into the, the holiday vacation, uh, it's not ideal, and he's frustrated. So I think the big thing, and the talk has been for the Bruins, for Coach Montgomery, for Jake DeBrusque, is, is trying to stay patient and trying to continue to work through it and focus on the details and, and have one basically go off your back. You know, like he's at the point now where he needs to just get some luck going and, and to have it turn around. We know he's a streaky scorer. So when it goes, when he does get that one that goes off his head and goes in, he should, uh, he should get to the point where he gets on a bit of a roll here. Hey, I, I heard Jim Montgomery talk about Jake DeBrusque in a post game, and I know that, you know, we came out of the Bruce Cassidy era where Cassidy would, as they said in Seinfeld, name names. And is yeah. Monty getting more comfortable with that? Is that a different kind of message to someone like Jake DeBrusque? I'm curious for your thoughts on Monty now not going full-blown Cassidy, but being a little more willing to put names to some comments. Yeah, I think that comes with being a second-year coach. And now, you know, this time last year, he was still trying to get a sense, get a feeling for guys and who he can push and who he couldn't. I think he has a very good handle on that now. I think also it's a younger team. And I think after the playoffs last season without Bergeron, without Krejci, I think the coaching staff's taken on a little bit more of um, – uh, a focus mode and, and putting onus on players and, and not calling out, I would say, but just being honest and, and, and deliberate. And, and when you lose games, that's easier for coaches to do too. I think last year when you win, 
65 games and you're, you're always winning, it's hard to really call people out. And in this situation, when you lose a few games, it's easier for the coaching staff to do that. So uh, bear with me if this is the football guy asking a superficial question from afar, but this is the football guy asking a superficial question from afar. Um, a year ago, I felt like all we heard about when the goalie situation was goalie Bob. Down the stretch, into the postseason, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is, has that narrative been squashed by the Bruins? Are they trying to keep goalie Bob out of the conversation? What, what's his status these days? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, maybe I haven't brought it up as much, but um, no, goalie Bob's front and center, and and the way he handles the goaltenders, the way he's had three or four or five Vezina Trophy guys at this point now uh, in his twenty-year career here in Boston, he just manages the goalie so well. He's all over. He makes all the decisions, and uh, he just has an unbelievable way about him. So I think it's just been a matter of so many other things going on for this team that you we haven't really focus on that goal tending. Uh Razor, in terms of uh, dealing with Winnipeg tonight, what are some of the stuff we should be looking for? Well, Winnipeg's a really good, detailed team. They're playing unbelievable defensively. Last nine games, seven of them and two goals or less they've given up. Connor Hellebuck, a UMass Lowell graduate, Hockey East legend, is uh, playing in goal for Winnipeg tonight. He's tough to beat, but it's just a, a real hardworking team. They have a couple of their superstars out of the lineup. Kyle Connors, another mask guy, is out of the lineup for six to eight weeks. But they're, uh, they're playing extremely well. They're hard to play against. And the Bruins are going to have to, like I said, play with really good details, close off the middle of the ice that they haven't been able to do, in, especially in the third period the other night. Do you believe that uh, regular season struggles are a good thing for a team to sort of prove its mettle? And I know we talked about a year ago the best regular season team in hockey, and then they get upset in the postseason. This team may be having to fight through some things more and develop. Could that be a good thing long term? Yeah, absolutely. And especially, again, with the start that they had. It, you don't really want to be going through adversity and being nine points out of the playoffs at this time, right? Like, that doesn't yep. work. You can't use that as a, a good thing. I think it's a positive thing with where they are and with the start they had. They're still second in the NHL in points, right? Like, they're really, really good. They're at the top of the National League, and, and it is good to figure out how to play overtime better, play in these tighter games. I think it will benefit them rather than winning 4-1 to one every game like they did last season. Uh, Razor, is there anything in Winnipeg other than the hockey game that you are at tonight is there anything that excites you about Winnipeg? Is there a restaurant? Is there a something? Or is Winnipeg just the Cleveland of Canada? Wow. Oh, it's certainly the Cleveland of Canada. <laughs> but we do have Tim Hortons. So I'm, I'm excited about hitting up at Tim Hortons this afternoon. Um, that is my Canadiana. So that'll be nice. But but yeah, literally beyond that, there's zero. It's like I I'm, can't wait to get to Minnesota in about 15 hours. Wow. Who who has ever uttered that? I can't wait to get yeah, to Minnesota. Exactly. That, <laughs> that's the point. That is the point. Yeah. <laughs> well, Razor, have a uh, have a great uh, holiday on the road, friend. I know we'll be uh, watching. I know Forian and I are off uh, next week. I know you are as well. We'll pick back up after the first of the year. Thanks a bunch. Uh, all the best to you and your family, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You too, guys. Have a great holiday. Hard to imagine it's. 2024 when we talk again but that's what we're doing so have a great holiday great new year and and thanks for having me on thank you buddy we appreciate you there goes andrew raycroft with us on the harbor one hotline some speculation on the text line that he was wrapping gifts while talking to us you know what it was it was the, uh, it did kind of sound like it but it was uh all the pucks being uh yeah, I'm pretty sure he's at morning skate yeah yeah that's what it hey, sounded yeah, maybe like he's doing his wrapping there no he was uh he was doing maybe, good maybe. triple tasking uh also roddy piper is uh allegedly from winnipeg uh he, he was there's a there's a uh a couple different stories there of the whole he might have been like from parts born, unknown no born on like an indian reservation or something like that 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 no. whole thing is a little weird i just know that like there are not a lot of famous people from winnipeg it's either pro wrestlers or hockey players one of the two i mean that's really about it i'm gonna check during the break i, I think, think you should because uh we want to prove you wrong 